What's up guys? So today we're gonna be going through the specs and components for the best PC builds that you can get your hands on right now in 2024. And this will be a continuous uh, video series that we do throughout the year to showcase the best possible components for builds from $500 to $2,500 every single month starting now in February. In order to showcase all these builds, we're using a new platform that I recently discovered. Normally, I might use something like PC Part Picker, but in today's video, we're going to be using BuildCores.com. It's a really cool platform that not only lets you showcase and share your builds with others, but it also lets you see things uh, like component wattage to make sure you're building and specking out the right power supply, compare all different kinds of components uh, between different CPUs, different GPUs, making sure you're getting the best price to performance, and also making sure that you're getting the best deal on whatever components you're buying by scanning and making sure that you're getting it from the right retailer at the right price from places like Amazon, Newegg, Best Buy, and others. So it's a really cool platform. You'll see it throughout the video, uh, and I'll make sure there's a link down in the description below, but all the guides are built on this platform, and that is where you'll be able to get the links to all of the components in these build guides. But let's start out with our $500 build. So for $500, it's an interesting time right now with AMD recently releasing the 8600, 8700G APUs. Those are really, really uh, tempting APUs to purchase right now and eliminate the need for a discrete GPU. So the 8700G is a really, really nice solution for something like this, like a $500 uh, price point because you're getting eight cores and 16 threads and you're also getting RDNA 3 graphics similar to something like a 1060, 1660 uh, type uh, GPU all for 329 bucks. It's, it's pretty hard to beat, but for this particular build, we're gonna go with uh, a slightly worse uh, CPU, but we're gonna get much better graphics performance. So we're going with an i3 13100F. Uh, it's a four core, eight thread CPU. Not gonna give you crazy performance, but it'll be perfect for this price point and for the graphics performance. that we're expecting to get at like 1080p low to medium settings in the majority of games. And then when it comes to graphics, we're going with a RX 6600 from AMD. It's around $30 cheaper than something like an RTX 3050. And for this level uh, of performance, we don't really need RTX. We don't need ray tracing. I'd rather have better rasterization performance and better FPS at 1080p. So that's why we're going with the RX 6600. And then for a uh, motherboard, we're going to go with the H610 motherboard. No overclock and nothing like that, but it'll be plenty fine for our 13100F. Uh, and then in terms of RAM and storage, we're going with 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory along with a 256 gig SSD. And that'll all go into our Zalman case and everything will be powered by a 450 watt 80 plus white certified power supply, uh, which will be plenty fine for this RX 6600 and the 13100F. Now, we did go $69 over our $500 price point, and it's kind of required if you want to go discrete graphics. You could also go something like a 5700G or the new generation of 8600 or 8700G and probably spend a little bit less, but to get the discrete graphics performance, we stepped up the budget a little bit. But now to look at a $1,000 price point build. So for $1,000, we're really, really stepping up performance. We're going with an AMD Ryzen 7 5700X, which is an eight core 16 thread CPU from the last generation of Ryzen uh, CPUs. Uh, you're not gonna get the same level of performance as a 7700 or 7800X, but it's still really, really good performance at quite a high core count for the price point that it's currently listed at. And we're also going to pair that with an RTX 4060 Ti. And as we saw in last month's pre-built gaming PC build guide, you're, you're really looking at more like a 4060 at this price point. If you want something like a 4060 Ti in a pre-built, you're looking at much closer to $1,200. Uh, and we'll make sure that is still the case in this month's uh, pre-built gaming PC guide. So if you're looking to buy a pre-built, that video will be coming up next week. But for the most part, you're usually able to build quite a bit higher performing machine if you build it yourself comparing to buying off the shelf. So 4060 Ti, 5700X, we're gonna pair that with a B550 motherboard. We'll get a little bit of overclocking out of it, but overall just generally good performance out of this motherboard. And in terms of RAM, we're gonna stick with the same kit of uh, two by eight gig, so 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory. And we'll go with a one terabyte SSD for this build, stepping up the storage just for a bigger game library, more storage capacity for this setup. And then in terms of a 
power supply. We're going to this Gigabyte 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. It'll be plenty if you wanted to upgrade either the CPU or the GPU down the line. So overall, really, really good power supply for the price. And then in terms of a case, we're going to go with this Antec case. Uh, so yeah, the Antec case, it, it looks really, really nice. We're going to throw in an additional three fans, RGB fans along with it, just to get a little bit more uh, aesthetics out of this build. But overall, with the 5700X and the 4060 Ti, we're going to get really, really good performance. A big bump uh, for $500 compared to the $500 build. But now it's time to step it up one notch further. Now we're getting into that 1440p, really high settings type build. Um, and for $1,500, with the latest release of the Super Cards from NVIDIA, it makes sense to now go with something like a 4070 Super. So... This build is really centered around the 4070 Super coming in at right around that $600 price point. We did go a little bit over in terms of the $1,500 kind of uh, price level, but that was for a reason. If we wanted to keep it at that $1,500, you're looking at probably a 4070 to account for that $50 difference. But with the 4070 Super costing that little bit extra for that really big chunk in performance increase, close to you know, 10, 15, even 20% in some titles, just makes more sense to go with something like the 4070 Super at the price point. And for our CPU, we're, we're going back to Intel with a 13600K. Now, we could have step, stuck with something like a 5700X. We're, we're still going last gen Intel with this particular processor, but we're getting performance, we're getting efficiency cores, we're getting a little bit higher clock speed as well with the 13600K, plus we can overclock considering we're going with a Z790 board. So the Z790 board isn't the best Z790 board, but for $180, it'll be plenty fine for our 13600K to be able to overclock, good VRM support, overall just a, a nice motherboard to pair with this build. And now we're going to step up to DDR5. So we're going to go with 32 gig kit of Trident Z 6,000 megahertz memory. And for storage, we're going to go with a, that same one terabyte uh, Western Digital Drive just to make sure that we're, we're, we're keeping up when it comes to storage capacity. Now we're going to cool our 13600K with this Be Quiet cooler. We're going to go air cooled. Uh, the, the cooler is capable of up to 250 watts of CPU power. So it'll be plenty fine for our 13600K, even with a little bit of overclocking. And we're just going to keep it simple with this uh, $1,500 build. Nice little blacked out look with the board and the CPU and the GPU, uh, the cooler. Uh, everything will kind of be a little bit blacked out with this $1,500 build. Uh, and, and then in terms of our power supply, we're going to go with an 850 watt cooler master power supply. Plenty of uh, overhead if you did want to upgrade the CPU or the GPU down the line. Uh, plus with the Z790 board, you can upgrade to latest gen, 14th gen Intel, even something like a 14900K with this 850 watt power supply. And then we're going to throw it all into an H5 case from NZXT, H5 Flow, black it out with some RGB fans yet again, just to kind of clean this thing up. You could also just go black fans from uh, either NZXT or Noctua or any other company out there to keep this thing kind of discreet and blacked out if you want to. So that is our $1,500 build, quite a step up yet again. $500 now gets you a 13600K, a 4070 Super, compared to the 4060 Ti and the 5700X. But what if we stepped up $500 more? What could $2,000 buy you in February 2024? And actually it can buy you quite a bit more than what $1,500 can. So for the CPU, we're going to go with a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. The latest from AMD. The best performing CPU for gaming outside of the 4900K. The 3D vCache with the 7800X 3D just gives you that little bit of performance boost in games overall. And we're going to pair that up with the latest, again, 4070 Ti Super. Now, we could have gone with something like a 7900 XT or 7800 XT from AMD, maybe saved a little bit on budget, where we might also get a little bit better rasterization performance. But overall, at this price point, you're looking at ultra settings at 1440p, medium to high settings at 4K, and you're also wanting the best possible ray tracing experience at those resolutions, and you're only gonna get that out of NVIDIA. You're also getting DLSS 3, you're getting frame gen support. So although AMD is catching up, they just haven't caught up yet when it comes to those you know, types of technologies when it comes to ray tracing, DLSS, and frame gen. And overall, at this level of resolution and at this level of FPS, it just makes more sense to go with NVIDIA right now. And with the Super release, it makes sense to go with the 4070 Ti Super compared to something like the 4070 Ti. And in terms of our motherboard, we're going with a B650 motherboard, uh, 
which will give us a little bit of overclocking headroom yet again on the 7800X3D. I don't necessarily think you need to overclock it for the performance that you're getting right out of the box, but you will have it available to you. We're gonna go with the same exact DDR5 uh, memory and the same exact storage as the previous build as well, along with the same exact power supply. Just stepping up from a 4070 Super to a 4070 Ti Super and going from the 13600K to the 50 or the 7800X3D doesn't necessitate a new cooler or a new uh, power supply, uh, but you could go with a slightly higher end power supply if you think you're going to upgrade either of those components down the line. In order to cool our CPU, we're gonna go with an NZXT Kraken 240 millimeter cooler. So it's a AIO, we're gonna get the best of performance in terms of cooling the 7800X3D uh, while still keeping the price point lower. So you could go with a triple or a 360 millimeter cooler uh, AIO for this build to keep that 7800X3D cool, but I think the 240 should be plenty fine with this NZXT Kraken cooler. And we're gonna throw all of that into an NZXT H9 case, which is uh, the latest from uh, NZXT in terms of case design, borrowing from the Lian Leo 11 Dynamic. It's a, a dual chamber case, but it looks really, really nice. And it, we kind of make this the all white build for we're looking at the last $1,500 build as the all black build. We got the white uh, AIO, the white case, the white fans from Corsair. We'll throw in an additional three fans just to make sure that we can populate all the bottom uh, fan uh, uh, slots as well as having the Kraken cover the top of our case and then we'll have the three included fans uh, in the H9. So overall for $2,000 you're getting really really good CPU and GPU performance. But now it's time to step it up a little bit more for our $2,500 build. And now it's really just time to center our build around the 4080 Super. It's not that crazy when it comes to a performance difference between the 4080 and the 4080 Super, but it's still the best of the best, the newest of the newest from NVIDIA outside of a 4090, which is gonna cost you $2,000 in and of itself and makes more sense in something like a $3,500 build. But for 2,500 bucks, we're gonna go with the RTX 4080 Super. This Galax one is currently listed at $1,129. Again, you could go with something like a 7900 XTX, which is gonna match in terms of rasterization overall, but it's gonna be limited in its ray tracing, its DLSS and its frame gen capabilities. So that's why we're going 4080 Super. And we're gonna pair that with the Intel 14700K. Now we could go with something like a 14900K, uh, that's again, best of the best when it comes to gaming performance right now, but we don't really need it. The 14700K has just enough cores, has plenty of cores, you don't need any more, uh, and it will perform just as well in terms of gaming performance. You might be losing 1%, 2% in some games, but overall, this will do you just fine uh, in terms of pairing it with a 4080 Super. And we're gonna go with a Z790 motherboard yet again. We're gonna spend around 50 extra dollars on this motherboard compared to the one in our $1,500 build. Just to get a little bit better overclocking performance if we need it. Some other uh, port selection things like that as well included on this board that we don't get with the slightly cheaper Z790 board. Uh, we're probably not gonna really need to overclock this 14700K. One, because Intel shipping them with such high frequencies anyways out of the factory that overclocking is quite difficult these days. Uh, but also the 14700K is gonna deliver plenty of performance out of the box with our 4080 Super. We're gonna use the exact same RAM and storage yet again as our previous two builds, uh, but in terms of the power supply, we're gonna step up to a 1000 watt NZXT power supply, and we're gonna cool our 14700K instead of with a 240 with a 360 millimeter cooler from Corsair with the H150i. Um, you could step this thing up yet again to a different 360 millimeter cooler with maybe an LCD display on it and things like that. Corsair has those as well, but you're gonna spend a little bit more money on a nice to have, not a necessity. And then when it comes to our case, we're gonna stick with the H9. I didn't include the extra fans with this build, but you could definitely include those to populate all of the slots within the case. But overall, as you can see with all those higher end builds, 1500 and up, we're looking at NVIDIA graphics cards mainly because you have the, the capabilities that NVIDIA gives you with DLSS 3 with 40 series uh, NVIDIA, as well as frame gen and the ray tracing performance that is so crucial in so many titles these days for 1440p and up. 
but under the 1440p or low 1440p, high 1080p at that $1,000 price point, you could go instead of a 4060 Ti, you could go with something like a 7700 XT or a 6700 XT, save a little bit of money, but still have just as good as rasterization performance in the majority of titles, getting just as much FPS, just maybe not the same ray tracing capabilities, but maybe you don't really need it at a 1080p resolution. But overall, those are the best PC builds, the best specs that you can get right now in February 2024. Next week, we'll take a look at the best pre-builds you can buy at all those price points in February 2024 to just see what kind of performance increases or decreases you get from building or buying a PC. But there you go. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave those down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, yet subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.